Hey guys, I'm Tactical Pumpkin, and in this video, I want to talk about the Battlefield 2042 beta that's just come out. I just want to share some of my opinions and thoughts, having played Battlefield for a few years now. First of all, off the bat, I want to say this beta is really, really good. When I first downloaded this, I thought, mm, I've heard it's very buggy, I've heard this and that, I've seen the leaked alpha gameplay that came out ages ago, and it wasn't looking too great. But then, honestly, loading into the beta for the first time, getting into a vehicle, driving around, shooting people, it really did feel like a proper Battlefield game. I oh, am right. in... Jesus Christ. Or left alt. I'm Whoa. in someone's tank. What a rat. Oh, my first kill. Unfortunately, in my first hour or so of the beta, I was greeted with 150 plus ping in all my lobbies. I don't know if that was just uh, some server issues that they had to fix up, but within the first three or four hours, all those issues cleared up and I was getting into good ping lobbies yeah, in Australia. Right One of the first tools I got a chance to use in this beta was the uh, oh. recon drone that you get for playing as Casper, oh, cool. one of the four operators, the one that has the ghillie suit. He gets this recon drone as one of his abilities, and it lets you scout around. It's it's very similar to the MAV or the MAVBOT from Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3, oh, except this is, it's a lot more agile, really. You can pull it out, you can send it out, start flying around, and you can really quickly get in and out of it, and it stays hovering in the sky once you leave it. So you can almost use it as a as just a second camera or a second angle point of view onto an objective and you can quickly switch to it to see where enemies are and ping them for yourself or other teammates. So most of the time in the beta that I spent not in a vehicle, I spent using this recon drone running around objectives and scouting them out. I have seen in some other videos that a lot of people seem to like playing as McKay. He's the guy who has the grappling hook and the maneuverability. I did try him as well and he's really cool and everything, but for some reason, I don't know, I'm just drawn to the recon drone. I like having that little rat ability to just be on top of objectives and see where everyone is. It feels really powerful. Okay, moving on from the recon drone. You'll notice that some of the comparisons I make during this video will definitely be targeted towards Call of Duty Warzone because that's kind of an obvious competitor with this game and one of the first things I noticed getting in is that this game does have a tactical sprint feature like Modern Warfare Warzone where you can sprint a little bit faster with the cost of your sprint to fire speed being slower because your weapon isn't always at the ready. The thing about how Battlefield's doing it though is at least from what I can tell the tactical sprint in this game is unlimited you can sprint from one side of the map to the other full tactical sprint the whole time Wait, oh, my, team, my team's attacking a fucking place, bro. Bro, you can... You can tack sprint forever. Oh, can ya? Yeah. It does feel nice to have a tactical sprint option in Battlefield. It hasn't had it before. And I think the way they've done it, where you can just sprint forever, is... It, it really oh, makes I... sense, because Battlefield maps are huge. Whatever. Usually you're not going to be sprinting. You'll probably be in a vehicle, or you'll just spawn on an objective. But it's for those times where you do need a sprint, it's really nice to have this. Yeah. And I don't think it needs to be limited, because the, the point of it is to get from point A to point B as fast as possible. You're putting yourself at a disadvantage anyway, running into a room, room like that. You won't be able to ADS radio? as quick as other people. So it's really just there to help the infantry get around quicker. And I like that. Okay, so the next thing I want to mention is the whole attachment system and how they're changing it up in this battlefield. So it works like this, you can see it's kind of this menu, this cross-section menu with your scopes at the top, your barrels left, mags right, and your underbarrels at the bottom. And when it comes to things like this, I think only time will tell how people react to this. For me, I'm very used to the classic, you know, create a class, this, that, put your attachments on the gun, see all the stats and everything. Doing it during the game, I guess it's it's cool because you can change it from one situation to another. If you're in a very close quarters combat area and you're capturing a flag, you might want to, you know, change your magazine so you have more rounds, less damage. You might want to change your scope and then you get in a helicopter, you go on a hill and you want to start doing some long range combat. Maybe you change your scope, long range scope, you put a bipod on, all this. And it really gives you that versatility on the move, so you don't have to redeploy, waste a ticket for your team, change your gun, and then come back with a new gun. 
However, one thing about it that I noticed, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's intended, but when I would change the attachments on my gun, there were a few points where I would die and respawn and my gun would be completely default again with no attachments. And this was pretty annoying because you die a lot in Battlefield. When you set up your gun the way you want it and then you die and you come back and then you remember, oh, now I need to set it up again. What, what attachment did I have before? This one, this one, yep, put it all back on. And it gets really annoying to have to do that over time. So I think it would be great if if it's a bug, it's fixed. Or if it's not a bug, they should think about changing it so that there's a preset on all of your different guns. So you have your sniper with this preset. It's the last attachment to use. So when you respawn with the sniper, you have the same attachments as before. I think that would be a good system going forward, assuming it's not already like that and this was just a bug. And one last thing while we're on the topic of this uh, UI for the attachments, I am curious to see how quickly it'll get cluttered if you unlock more attachments, because I noticed when I first started playing the beta, there were only maybe two attachments on either side, uh, just starting off the default ones. And then as I leveled up a bit, I noticed a couple more popping up on the, on the UI. So I don't know how that's going to look when you have, say, I don't know, 10 different magazines unlocked if that's even a possibility or you have like 10 different scopes i know in warzone again a comparison with warzone you can have probably like 15 scopes per gun if, if it ends up being like that in battlefield and they still have this same ui i can't really picture there being 10 or 15 scopes up the list and then you have to find the right one it seems like it could get a little bit inconvenient but i guess once again we'll have to see what happens with time and as people figure out how it works unlock more stuff we'll see how that goes now i want to talk about the vehicles for a second because honestly for me in every other battlefield game whether it's battlefield 4 3 1 hardline if you count that all those other games i've never been really that interested in the vehicles i've always liked using them occasionally but i was never really that good or really had all that much fun in them something about the vehicles in this game it's just i couldn't stop using them Throughout the beta, I played probably, I don't know, 40% on foot and 60% in helicopters, tanks, jeeps. I just had so much fun with it. As a lady, you can't even revive people. You can only heal. Oh, we got a jet on us, bro? Miss me with that shit. Fly downwards, there's no way he can want to push us like that. Uh, where, where are some people? Anyone sniping? Oh, enemy helicopter. Little bird. Oh. Little bird made a mistake. Yeah, oh, that's he right. jumped <laughs> Alright, I'm pulling a battlefield. I made a mistake. Grab me. Oh, fuck. Forward. Oh, there you go. Yeah! Just on the subject of vehicles, another thing that I need to talk about is the fact that they've decided to introduce a radio into the ground vehicles or like the the transport vehicles the jeeps the pickup trucks the civilian trucks all those vehicles they have this radio feature you can play music through the vehicle as you drive it around the map blowing shit up and on top of that when you get out of the car the music's still playing and it's the funniest thing ever it's actually i'm so happy they put that in the game He's a ride, Jacob's coming down. Damn. Oh, I hopped out. There we go, let's go. Let's let's listen to some tunes. Oh! Check out the mini-map! There's a vehicle! Fuck him up. Where they at? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> actually rolled the shit out of them. Something else to mention about the vehicles, if there was any question that DICE wanted this game to be a fun sandbox experience, similar to good old Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3 type stuff, I mean, they literally put voice lines in the game for when you ramp your vehicle off of cliffs for your characters to scream. My driving's gonna be like in 20 years time. Oh! Check out the mini-map! There's a vehicle! Fuck him up! I've also noticed that the handling in this game and the general feel of driving a ground vehicle is just way better than it used to be in the old Battlefield games. I remember like Battlefield 4 
uh, Battlefield 3 driving jeeps and that, it felt a little bit desynky oh and a little yeah. bit laggy. Wait, I think bad? that in, I don't know if it was Battlefield 1, I think it was Battlefield 5, it was the first time I got into a vehicle in Battlefield and it felt like they were driving properly. And I think that's been carried over to this game as well because the vehicles in this feel much better than what they used to in the old games. And because this game takes place in 2042, the Jeeps and all that are much more maneuverable than they were in Battlefield 5. So those better driving mechanics really shine with these faster vehicles. Now when it comes to the helicopters, I think this is where I probably had the most fun in the beta. But there was one extremely annoying issue that I will explain now when it comes to the helicopter controls. So in past Battlefield games with helicopters, I've always liked to change my control scheme so that I can aim with my mouse in the helicopter the same way I can aim as a soldier on foot. Meaning mouse left aims left, mouse forwards aims upwards, and you get the idea. I pretty much had it like that and then I'd use WASD, Q and E for the actual um, bigger movements of the helicopter, which makes sense to me. That's how I've liked to have it in, in Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3. I've tried doing that in this beta, and no matter what I changed, what I tried to do to get around it, I would never be able to aim left with my mouse, even though I applied the setting in the yaw section of the pilot controls. Right, you. In a helicopter trying to look left. Why does that one work? Okay, this is fucking sh why can't I look left? I don't know, you change your controls. Yeah, but even if you do it, you won't be able to look left either. It's an actual bug with the controls. So I can look right, but if I try and look left... Oh no, I can't do it! Oh no, what a shame, what a shame. Fix it, Dice. Fix like it right. right now. Dice, please fix. Dice, please. Let me look left. So, I'm not sure if this is an issue with the actual control scheme that I'm using, the particular combination that I'm using, or if it's just, in general, that bind for looking to the left with the mouse just is glitched for some reason. But either way, I'm sure that that's the kind of thing that will definitely be fixed by release, so I don't need to worry about it. It's just annoying in the beta, I won't be able to really uh, use the helicopters the way I'd like. And one last thing about the helicopter mouse movement is it doesn't look like there's any sort of uh, sensitivity to it. So if you have your mouse bound to turn your helicopter right, then you will be able to turn it right if you move your mouse to the right. But you need to move it past a certain speed. So if you're moving your mouse too slow, it won't move at all. It's almost like a dead zone on a controller, if you know what I mean. It kind of works like that which obviously isn't really supposed to be like that. So I hope that also gets fixed before the game launches. This is just a side note, but we did test if you can fly helicopters through tunnels in this game, and just like in, I believe, the old battlefields, you can do it. The propellers aren't actually a physical part of the helicopter. So like you can see here, we just flew straight through the little tunnel that goes under the rocket ship on orbital, and we came out the other side. Yeah, just, <laughs> that guy in the thing is laid off. <laughs> I can confirm Battlefield 2042 has random portable speakers around the map playing music. But jokes aside, I do want to talk about the AI in this game, because as I'm sure you probably know, this game has AI in the multiplayer modes, which some people like it, some people hate it. I don't really mind, to be honest. I mean, why not if you want a 128-player lobby and there's only 122 people in it, then fill the last six slots with a couple bots. Who cares at the end of the day? It makes the world feel more full and you're rarely going to run into them anyway. And chances are, if you do run into a bot, 9 out of 10 times, something will happen that'll make you laugh. Oh my god. What's he doing? Why are you flying like that? He was just shooting at me. Is that a bot? Surely not. I don't think the bots take helis. Regardless, I think it's a bot. I'm playing the game. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's gotta be a bot, bro. <laughs> if it is an enemy. There's no way that's a person. Just... Nah, he's turning too perfectly. Yeah, well. that's a bot. No that shot. Has to be a bot. Yeah. Some guy that's AFK in the game. Oh! I got him! <laughs> bye bye! Bye bye! <laughs> Boom! Oh. Trust me with this one though, whatever you do, do not let a bot get a melee takedown on you in Battlefield 2042. Or you might just end up like this poor man. God rest his soul. Yeah, if that was me I probably would have just uninstalled the beta and cancelled my pre-order. Here's another cool little feature, I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but in this game you can actually stand on top of air vehicles pretty well and ride on them while they fly around the map. Hello dog. Dog, no! No, dog! Dog, up here! Dog, no. Oh well. Bye dog. Alright, I'm gonna tell dog to go F. Where, which F. flag do you wanna go? F? Is F, are we losing it? Yeah, we are losing There's it. There's a tank. Throughout the beta, I did notice some pretty considerable desync problems with uh, air vehicles, jets, uh, helicopters not so much, but definitely jets. You can see pretty much in any beta gameplay that you find, jets are just desyncing everywhere. They'll be flying one direction, and they'll completely jump up, down, left, right, wherever they feel like. And this makes it really hard to hit them with rockets and stuff, because they just usually completely miss when the jet just decides to move out of the way. So hopefully that's fixed before launch. It's not always this bad though, there are some times where you can have good dogfights with jets. This is the rattiest gameplay we've done so far in a game of Battlefield. And we used to just play a helicopter, I mean plane in Battlefield 1. It doesn't feel so nice when a fucking helicopter can chase a jet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so one of the last things I want to touch on in this video is the destruction. Obviously, destruction is a huge part of the Battlefield series. It has been since the good old days, you know, Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3. So there really, obviously there has to be destruction in this game, and there is destruction in this game. It's just probably not as much as I was hoping for or expected. It feels very similar to Battlefield 4 where you have your destruction that can happen to the regular houses and buildings around the maps and then you have your big levolution event which in this map's case, Orbital, is the rocket ship leaving the launch pad. I wonder where that's going. Jesus. Whereabouts are you? Where's the map base? This Somewhere one? in South America. Oh, ah, yeah. Jet's trying to shoot it down. <laughs> and while things like this are cool, they're bound to get old eventually, just like they did in Battlefield 4. But that's fine. They, they have their place in this game, in the other games. They always had. They just make the maps more unique, these little events that can happen. And I think it is random, so it doesn't happen every game. I also think there's a way to blow up the rocket ship so the launch fails. I'm not sure how that works, I haven't done it before, but I have heard that there's a way to do it. So, Levolution events and stuff, that's fine and all, but the regular destruction, uh, it is, it does feel like Battlefield 4. I think it's a bit hard to see exactly to what extent it's at, because the orbital map doesn't really have many... Uh, buildings on it that would usually be destructible. That one that you can see in this clip, uh, that little garage building with all the holes in it, that is one of the ones that you can actually destroy all the walls. I don't think it collapses, but you can blow ho holes into all the individual walls and stuff, which is pretty cool. It's just, I think we need to wait for a map with more of those regular buildings in it to see what the true extent of the destruction actually is and to what extent the destruction will actually affect the overall gameplay. In the orbital map though, I do think that it was a little bit underwhelming for a battlefield title. Alright, with all that aside, let's talk about the big thing. The tornado, the thunderstorms, the weather effects that DICE have been marketing since the first trailer came out. I've probably played about say 30 matches in the beta so far and I've probably seen at least 12 or 11 or 12 tornadoes I'd say 
And I think this ratio is a little bit too high. I get for the beta, maybe they made it a bit higher so that people have a better chance to experience it. But I really do hope that this is a lot less frequent when the actual game comes out and is fully released. Because the tornadoes are cool, just like the Levolution stuff, but they can get annoying and repetitive when they happen a few games in a row and they ruin your flow or they change the flow of the match too often. I think they should be more of like a 1 in 10 games sort of occurrence. Now to be fair, it doesn't destroy the whole map so you can pretty easily avoid tornadoes when they do show up in game. You can just kind of avoid the objectives that they sort of gravitate towards and play on the other side of the map. And it is genuinely fun to throw yourself into a tornado with a parachute and let it spit you out to another part of the map. It's just that I think it needs to happen a little bit less often to make it that bit more special. I get that, I'm sure DICE probably put a lot of work into the tornadoes and their physics, they want to show it off and really have it out there, but it's really going to burn people out if it's as common as it has been in the beta. With that said, here's an example of what can happen to you if you stay too close to a tornado. That's so cool. Oh! Oh, I see a car! Where'd that car come from? Ow. Yep, free road kill for that guy. I'm sure he was happy about that one. In summary, I think that this game is going to be really the best Battlefield since... Battlefield 3 and 4, which means at least for me, it'll definitely be a competitor for uh, my favorite Battlefield game of all time. It's really gotten that fun feel back that the series kind of lost uh, after Battlefield 4 with Hardline, Battlefield 1, and Battlefield 5. And I'm really excited to see how the actual game feels when it comes out and we have access to all the maps and all the weapons all the content in the game, plus the additional content I'm sure they're going to add if they decide to follow the same sort of system they did with uh, Battlefield 5, having like a battle pass and all that, which is pretty much standard nowadays in these FPS games. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. So, most importantly, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've gotten some useful or interesting information out of this video. That was my goal. And if you are a Battlefield player, I hope that you have been having fun with the beta, testing things out. If you are an old school Battlefield player and you've been reluctant about giving this game a go, I would definitely suggest having a crack at it because it really does feel like Battlefield is going back to the good old days. And with that, I will leave you with some of the best moments of my Battlefield 2042 beta experience. Have a good one. I'll catch you in the next video.